Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tech Time Live. I am Jacob DiBattista with the BEA Tech Services Department. And on the chat is Rob Rivera, who will be moderating any questions or comments you may have. We also have sales rep John Anderson to answer any questions as well. So if you have any questions, comments you'd like to make, just put them in the chat box. Um, the point of today's Tech Time Live is to show you the LZR H100 and tell you about how to program and install. So what you can see here is we have the H100. This is our gate and barrier arm activation and safety sensor. You can see it's in a bollard. We don't sell it with a bollard, but I had just had this myself for this demonstration. If you imagine the field that comes out of it, it's a horizontal beam that will go straight across your opening. Just imagine this being your driveway or wherever you're setting it up. And then we're gonna use these chairs as reference to represent my gate. So back to the H100, it is to be mounted to the left or the right corner of a gate or a barrier arm. <clears throat> and it is to be 14 to 17 in inches high. That's the BEA recommendation. You'll see we have four LEDs. We have blue for power. Orange is to represent that it needs to be set for a reference point or a mounting side. And then we have two red. The one furthest from the blue is your activation relay one. The one closest to the blue is your safety relay two. You'll see we have a cable that's coming out of there. It is a 30 foot cable <clears throat> that goes over to here. And we're gonna go over the wiring. I'm gonna unplug the power for safety purposes. So you'll see here, and when it's in your gate, of course, it's gonna look a lot more nicer than I have presented here. We have about 10 wires. You have two orange. Don't worry about the orange, they are not used for anything. You have a red and a black. The red is your positive, black is negative. You'll see the power supply here I have is a BEA power supply. That's about 13 to 15 volts DC because the sensor is a DC sensor only. Do not use AC or it's not gonna work. On the right, we have four wires. There's a solid white and a solid green. This is relay one activation. We have green with a white stripe and white with a black stripe. Stripes are hard to see on camera, but this is safety relay two. Tied to my red and my black, you'll see we have two blue. There's a solid blue tied with the red and a blue with a white stripe tied with the black. This is our test circuit that we have for the sensor. All you have to do is put it to power. Make sure that the blue is with the red and the blue with the white stripe is with the black because they're polarity sensitive. Um, one more little fact I'd like to add in there is it is not a UL325 sensor. So now that we've gone over the wiring, we are going to apply our power back in. Red is positive, black is negative. And you'll see we don't have power. So in situations like this, make sure your power is turned on. Troubleshooting 101. So you'll see we have the lights again. Blue, orange, and two red. Now, if this sensor was set up, those red would mean green for standby. Right now, it's red for detection. The only way to program the, the sensor is with the BEA remote, 10 remote. So the first thing you want to do with any H100 installation is to show the reference points and the lasers. So what you wanna do is we have a magic wand here. You'll do unlock, it's gonna blink red. Hit magic wand, magic wand. You'll see at the zero degree mark, we have one laser point, 45 degree. We have a second laser point and 90 degrees from the sensor, we have a third one, which is right in there. Basically what this is, is the zero degree has to be parallel with the gate. You wanna make sure you set it up right this way. 90 degree has to be perpendicular from the gate. One little fact is don't look into the laser point. They're not just LED, it could hurt your eyes, but that's the only time you really have to worry about it. So just don't look too closely. 
Once you confirm that your laser points and your references are at zero degree and 90 degree, now you wanna actually set your reference point and if it's a left or a right mount sensor. So we said, imagine that that's our gate this way. To determine if it's a left or right mount sensor, have your gate right in front of you and be standing on the side that that laser, the LZRH100 is facing you. In our instance, it's a left mount. Once that's determined, unlock. Magic wand, magic wand, takes off your red spot. So you'll see at the right, laser point went away. Lock, lock. So we're gonna go over how to program and I'm gonna go over the speed of the LEDs and what they mean. When you hit unlock, you'll get a slowly flashing red. One above the red is shaky box. This box determines if it's a left or right mount. Once you hit a symbol, you'll get a faster blinking LED. One and two are left to right with reference. Three and four are left and right without reference. We don't have a reference, but I'll explain what that is. We're gonna set it to three because it's a left mount without a reference. You'll see that the blinking stopped going as fast and it's a little slower. Lock, lock, and the LED stops. Now here's what I mean by the reference point. Let's put back on the LED, the laser points for one second. When you're installing the sensor, the zero degree mark, if you had a reference point, let's say that you wanted to use it, but wherever that laser hits is more than 16 feet away. There is a reflective tape that you put right where that laser hits. And it has to be a four by four square or flat surface. It doesn't matter if it's square or not, but it has to be flat. What the reference point does is it makes it more accurate detection at the zero degree mark, which is right against the skate. Basically how it works is it measures the amount of light reflected and the, the distance reflected, and it gives you a better detection. I don't have that reflective tape here. So we're just, we set it up without it already. Unlock, you'll see that you have to be at a certain angle sometimes. So if it ever doesn't work, try going at about 30 degrees. Magic wand, magic wand. Laser points are gone. So you'll see we have one green, one red. Well, there was one green. So two green means that it sees me. From this point, once you position your H100, we have to determine how big our field is. It does not go in inches, it goes by meters. So you wanna do, it's 3.3 feet per meter. So you wanna make sure you do your calculations. And what I have here, based on the space that we have is 1.8 meters this way, 3.3 meters this way. So what we're gonna do, you'll see four letters at the top right of your remote. A and B are width and depth for your activation field. C and D are width and depth for your safety field. We're gonna start with activation. So unlock, blinking red, A, it has to be a two digit number. So 1.8 meters, one eight. You'll see that the blinking slowed down. So now it's 1.8 meters this way. Now, since this is activation, our depth is about 3.3 meters. So B, three, three, blinking slowed down, lock, lock. So now unlock again, we'll do safety. Safety width, C, one, eight. Slow blink. Make sure that the LED changes its pace every time that you do a two-digit number or a letter. D for depth. Since it's safety, we want it to be a little smaller. We'll set that to 1.8 as well. Lock, lock. So now from this point, if I step to the side of the sensor, you have two green LEDs, which means that it's in standby, but you're not done at this moment. Now you do have the sensor field set up for it, but you want to do a teach-in. There are two ways to do a teach-in, and that basically just does the final calibration of the field. Unlock, magic wand one, this is for the safety field. Unlock, magic wand two, that's for your activation. Anytime you change the field, I would recommend doing a teach-in for one or both fields. It just makes it more accurate and more precise. 
So what we're going to do is I referenced before that reflective tape. If you're going to use reflective tape and set it up with a reference, it would know the width just based on that tape. And then you wouldn't even have to set it up. The only thing you'd have to set up is depth. And even then you don't have to, for one reason, you can do a walk teaching where you will walk the field and it recognizes how far you were. And the, and the way to do that is unlock magic wand two. What we're going to do is we're going to stand to the side. You'll have a fast blinking LED and then it goes slow. From this point, you want to walk your field in a straight line. So we have it right at the O. Walk back. If we look at the sensor, it's still going to be blinking red, but it's going to take about 30 to 40 seconds. One thing I want to point out is when you're walking, let's say we did want the field to be at the O right there. It's not going to be at the O if we walk right at, the, at that letter because when you're walking, you're not walking completely straight. You have your arms swinging. You might be swaying. So the field is going to retract off you about, let's say, 6 to 12 inches, maybe. So what you want to do is if I wanted to be directly right there, I would have wanted to stand to the right of these boxes a little bit walked, and then it would have been right at that letter. So we have green LED. So when I walk up to the sensor at least one step, you'll see we had two LEDs right at the O. It's that accurate. Now, what you just saw is a typical programming session without a few details. One of those details is pedestrian rejection. This is a sensor capable of doing vehicles only. And the way to do that is the wedge shape, two above the blue. It goes from one to six. One to two is still pedestrians. Two, you may be able to filter out some, but it kind of takes away some environmental disturbance. Three to six is vehicles only. The higher you go, the more bigger the object has to go because it measures in centimeters. Let's just set it all the way to six. I typically have text set at the four or five, but we'll set it to six just for demonstration. So we hit unlock, we hit the wedge and you'll see it's going faster. Six, lock, lock. You wanna make sure the LED changed. So now the safety field sees me of course, because it always wants to see what's there, but the other LED stays green because we set it pedestrian rejection. If I do unlock, wedge, one, lock, lock, now it sees me. So you wanna set it to a higher number for vehicles only at your gator barrier arm. One of the other things we have is max presence time. Right now it's set to infinite. So as long as I stand here, the safety field is gonna keep that barrier arm open. Well, what if someone puts, in this case, we have a watering can. What if someone puts a trash can right in front of that sensor? LED is going to stay red, infinitely holding open that gate. You can have it so that it relearns that trash can. And after 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes, it will relearn it as part of the field and allow it to come, the gate to come back down. Now, you want to, this is application dependent. You want to set it up so it's not going to hit a car. So people mostly do infinite so that it always holds the, the gate open in case a vehicle's there. So we'll put that back in our field. We'll go back to green because I have it set for infinite. Now, the other thing we have is detection time, which is actually detection delays the clock. What this is, is let's say you had some fog moving through the area and the sensor will pick it up. Well, what detection delay is, is it will make it so you have to be moving in this field for 900 milliseconds or whatever you set it to before it'll set off a detection. So a fog is not gonna stay in one place forever. It'll keep moving and that's what that does for the sensor. And along with that, we have the immunity button set at the one is normal, set at the two, and it takes away environmental disturbance like fog or rain or snow and things of that nature. The only other one we'll go over is the arrows, directionality. Basically, you can make it so that with this sensor, you have to be going either straight towards it for it to set off. So let's say you had just a straight lane where there's no chance someone's coming from the side, or 
you can have it so you're coming from an angle. So let's imagine that I had some walls that are curved here and you can't just go with a vehicle straight into the, into the gate. Well, if you come from the side and you're coming out a 30, about 30 degree angle or so, you can set it up so that the sensor will see that as well as straight on traffic. And basically that's a typical installation for the H100. Uh, the more experience you get with it, the more quicker installation will be. Um, programming, as you saw, it only might take like five to 10 minutes. The more experience you get, that's gonna start decreasing over time. Um, but basically that, that was about it. If you have any questions, comments you'd like to make, now's the time to make them. Um, Rob, John and myself will answer any questions you may have. You can also find some user's guide on our website, beasensors.com. And we all, we're also taking some uh, suggestions for Tech Time Live. Is there any other sensors you might wanna know about, anything you might want to learn how to program, just let us know and we will get on it. That's it. We don't see any, any questions, any more questions. Uh, hold on a second, there's one. The detection delay will delay the sensor signal from the time programmed into the unit. Is that correct? Uh, the, the detection delay. Uh, so the detection delay is really, to be honest with you, in practical use, the detection delay is almost unnoticeable. Uh, it, it only is in fractions of a second. And that fraction of a second of delay, it, it requires a solid object to be in that detection field for the specified amount of time. As Jake mentioned, nine is the maximum 900th of a second. So something would have to be in the field for 900th of a second, solidly put there in order for the, the detection to take place. So from the when, from the time you you adjust it, yes, it it's now active, and then something has to be in that activation field for that nine hundredths of a second to get that detection. So simply put, fog, as Jake mentioned, fog and rain move, snow, everything moves without that uh, movement, it, it's functioning. So we have another question: What is test? So a test circuit is. Um, I would call it for the future. I mean, we have future needs for it, but th that could be um, set up in the industry. Many people in the industry will know test circuits are set up for monitor device. This one, as Jake pointed out, is not UL325. So it's really for the future. I mean, we, hopefully someday we'll get this thing uh, UL325, but here's the catch to that. Loops are not part of UL325. Loops are not a part. The, uh, the safety devices like photo eyes and edges are UL325. This is for a loop. So uh, to take the place of, of a ground loop, it's a sensor that takes that place. So that's what a test circuit is. <laughs> and let's see here. What are the power requirements? Someone about power requirements, 12 to 24 volts DC only. Right. It's the main thing is filter recommendation. And it, actually it's 10 to 35 volts DC to be precise. It, it, because it's an industrial product, we made it a little bit more variable for some of the control systems out there that do offer DC power on them. Uh, let's see here. What is the power? What is the pattern max size? So 32 feet by 32 feet. And remember, you have, essentially you have two fields. We have field one that is designed for relay one. And that field is for, as Jake, Jake pointed out, for motion. That is for, that's really to act an activation loop. Um, the field two, which is tied to relay two is a safety. That one cannot be filtered. Field two cannot be filtered, meaning you cannot make it not see pedestrians or anything. But if you if you uh, if you tie that 
to your safety field, safeties do on your, I'm sorry, your safety inputs, your control, safeties do not activate gates or barriers to open, activations do. So if somebody walks up in that safety field and the safety sees them all the time, it will only prevent the gate from closing or coming down on a vehicle. Um, it will not activate the gate. That's the difference. Uh, detection trajectory. Uh, okay, so on detection tra trajectory is a way of controlling the way that the sensor can identify traffic. If you want your traffic to move directly down the pathway, it, it comes factory set on three, which will see things moving towards it, slightly to the right or slightly to the left. So it's pretty variable. Four makes it to where everything, it can be anywhere in the field, but it has to move directly to the, the gate or barrier. Yep, uh, and that's what we were saying before, is if this was a curved place, you have to go at an angle, you can set it up so it will detect at an angle. And, and here's a great example with of how to use that. So we have bi-direction, which is number one. If you had a rounded type entryway towards a gate, and often so vehicles can come from the right, they can come from the left, they can come straight on, or even multiple angles because it's a, kind of a circular entryway, which is somewhat we've come across that. On number one, you can make it see uh, a vehicle moving from any direction into the field, into the field that you've identified. So one would be a great place for that. And then you would, of course, use pedestrian rejection if you chose not to activate it for people walking through that. So th that that's the way we control it to where you can see or not see. If you go to number six, oftentimes we don't even have to use pedestrian rejection because number six, you really have to be going a, a larger uh, object moving directly down the center of the pathway to activate the gate. So it's very strict and it doesn't see people very easily at all on number six. This is a way of controlling the, the movement that you want to identify. That's what traje trajectory, uh, well, de detection trajectory is like. <laughs> um, let's see here, can the ex exit field see, where was that? It's moving around. Can the exit field see cars going one way or both ways? The exit field, well, that would be depend on your detection trajectory. If you choose to see cars going both ways, yes, you can see vehicles going both ways. If you choose and you say this is an exit loop, as you mentioned, can the exit field, if you want it only to see vehicles moving that one way to activate that gate, it will only see, identify the vehicles moving in that one direction. So that, that hopefully that answers it. Can I turn the lights off? Uh, yeah, actually we do have a uh, kind of famous stealth mode on this. So if you wanted to put it someplace and have it not identified as a working object and turn the lights off, you can simply do unlock magic wand number four and the lights are off. It looks like an inanimate object, less likely to be tampered with. Um, can it be used on industrial doors? Um, I would say um, this is designed, this sensor is designed to be work, used on gates and barriers. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff Dunham wants to know if Jake's the fisherman. <laughs> Um, if it didn't tell you any hints already, <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, and, and how, so we have a good question, a couple of good questions. Can the exit field see cars going one way? Okay. Can the, can I turn, uh, how do you check what my settings are? So how, how can you check a setting to see where it's at? So what you want to do is let's say you want to check the mounting side that we set it to, which was three unlock and like i said if it doesn't work get it about a 30 degree shaky box it's going fast question mark and count the green one two three so that's set to three lock lock 
So essentially you would hit unlock to put it in program mode. You would hit the command that you want to question and then you'd hit the question mark and it will respond with a series of green blinks. That green blinks would identify what the setting on that specific command is in general. <laughs> Dunham wants to know, oh no, Prokovich wants to know if you catch fish. Um, <laughs> so that's a whole different, of course he does, he eats fish. So he, of course he catches them. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think that's all the good questions. Uh, enough about the fishing. <laughs> Anything to add there, Mr. Jake? That I missed. I think we've hit about everything. Um, just about. I don't think there's anything more to explain. I will say, uh, Mr. Prokovich, if you want to come on the boat sometime, we'll go fishing and I'll show you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm out. Anyone else? I think that's it there, Jake. Okay, well, thanks everyone for watching this Tech Time Live. Uh, like I said, if you have any other recommendations you want us to do, let us know. And any questions, do feel free to email us. Uh, you can find all of our info on the BEA sensors.com.